Hi, welcome to Naresh IT. This is Kishore, and today we are going to discuss about multiple inheritance. In last session, we have discussed what is inheritance, okay, and how many types of inheritance models are available. Today, I am going to discuss about multiple inheritance. Now, first of all, what is called multiple inheritance? It is the process of deriving one class from more than one base class. Okay. Multiple inheritance stands for deriving a new class by using of more than one base class. Yesterday, we have discussed single level inheritance. Single level inheritance means what? It is the process of deriving a class from only one base class. That is why a derived class with only one base class is called single level inheritance. Now, it is multiple that means what? A derived class from several base classes. Now, for example, it is the A class, it is the base B class. Now, both are base classes. Next, here, from here I want to derive class C. Now, the C class is having A properties as well as B properties and its own properties also. Okay? Now, how many base classes are participated means two base classes and how many derived classes are there only? One. Now, this concept is called uh, multiple inheritance. Now, how to conduct multiple inheritance? And here, one important point we have to discuss. What is that? Okay. For example, I am going to derive class C from A. Next, uh, class C from B. That means, both the properties are passed to class C. Okay. Now, the point is A properties as well as B properties. Both are passed to class C and here we have to remember one important point what it is protected data members already you have discussed we are having private members public members protected members okay for example I am going to give small example say this what is a protected member and why we need the protected members in inheritance concept we know that public members okay are available to the object and outside also but private member should be accessed only with the member functions of same class. Now, what about protected member and why we need the protected members in our programming? Okay. Just watch here. I am giving small example for this. Suppose class student is there. Okay. Here, marks is there. Means now we are having two classes. One is student class and another one is marks class. Now, here I want to find out the result i want to find out the result that means it is the third class and this class is derived from which classes both stu and marks class and here suppose student id here id is there and name is there next here student marks are there m1 m2 m3 now here i want to find out uh, total actually we are getting the total from marks the m1 plus m2 plus m3 okay here watch it carefully here the point is id name private members suppose m1 m2 m3 are also private members now as per c plus plus hiding as plus yes as, as per c plus plus data hiding concept uh, the private members of one class are not available or not visible outside the class that means now we are not able to access m1 m2 m3 directly from result class suppose we are making public then what is the problem it is against the data hiding concept actually cpp main rule is what data hiding when it is public anybody can access that means it is against data hiding when it is private only that class can access but our requirement is what that class and next class also that means I want to use the same data members in declared class and derived class. In declared class and derived class, then you should have to go for protected data members. Now, it is the necessity of protected data members. That is why we need the protected data members. When a member is protected, when data members are protected, they are accessible in that class and immediately derived class. It is the most important thing. Okay. Whenever the data members are protected, they can access 
within that declared class and immediately derived class. Further availability is depended on the inheritance mode means what visibility mode. Suppose, if the derivation conduct for example, watch this here it is a base class and here protected members are there. Now, some protected members are there. Now, I am going to derive a class it is the derived class and here the point is these are the protected members and derived class is having okay, public area protected area you know that. Now, so, here I am going to give private for example and protected once again. Now, what happens? Suppose, you are going to derive this class in public mode. Okay? Now, this class is derived in public mode then what happens? All the protected members of base class will become once again protected in derived class that is why here public mode. When public mode is used what happens? All the protected members of base class once again they will become protected members in derived class that is why they are available for further inheritance. Now, next class it is the next class and in, in next class also we can use the same protected members next. Now, what about private mode when the derivation is conducted in private mode okay, when the derivation is conducted in private mode then what happens. Now, the protected members of base class will become private members of derived class it is the point. Okay whenever the derivation is conducted in private mode. Now, the protected members of base class will become private members of derived class and they can access with the public members of public members of derived class. Okay? They should be accessed with the public members of derived class, but here one important point they are not available for next class it is the most important thing that is why when a data member is protected. Okay. Now, in public mode they will become protected in derived class and they are ready for further inheritance. When protected members are derived in private mode protected members will become private members and then they are not available for next class. Okay. According to this example observe it in private mode they are available for next class in public mode also they are available for next class that means the protected members are used in declared class and immediately derived class. The next class availability is depended on private or public mode okay? that is why we can use the protected members in at least two classes. Okay? We can use the protected members minimum in two classes those classes are what means declared class and derived class it is what is protected that is why obviously in multiple inheritance, multi level inheritance, hybrid inheritance we need the protected data members. Okay? That is why protected members are commonly used in multiple inheritance, multi level inheritance, hybrid inheritance in common we are going to use that. Now, I am going to show you what is multiple inheritance, what is called multiple inheritance. Okay? Now, my example is going to start with the student class first it is the base class and here it is the marks class and here I want to find out the student result that is it. Now, these two are the base classes and it is the derived class it is the base class it is the derived class that is why we have to construct first of all base classes. Now, I am going to start the program first uh, common header files later class. Okay, first uh, I was stream dot h, next conio dot h. Okay, for here c out and c in, and here it is for console input output operations. Next, uh, suppose class student is there, and here int id and name also there. Okay, in public area, I want to read the data. Void get student it is for reading the data for both id and name. Now, see out enter student id I want to read the student id and name see in 
ID and name. Okay, fine. Here it is only for inputting the student details. Next, I want to print the student data. Now put student. Suppose here I am going to print student ID. ID equal to ID. Next, end all for next line. And next one, I want to print the name. Name also printed. Okay. Now it is the base class. Okay. First base class student is created. Next we need another base class called marks. That's why I'm going to create another one called marks. And here marks also base class. That's why there is no need of a visibility label and inheritance operator. Here int suppose m1 comma m2 comma m3. Three subjects marks in first subject, second subject and third subject. Next we have to read the data. First uh, void get marks. Okay. Here I am going to read the student uh, marks. Enter three subject marks. Okay. See in M1, M2, M3. Now I want to print the marks. Now void put marks. Now I want to print student marks M1 equal to Okay, and here actually it is not required, of course, but I want to find out the total also. Then M1 and L C out M2 second subject marks it is going to print next uh, third subject marks also M3. Okay, here this function is going to read the three subject marks, it is going to print the three subject marks. Now I want to find out the result. Okay, here I want to find out the result by using of both student and uh, marks class. Then how it is? Just a class. Okay, here result class. It is the derived class, and it is derived from public student comma public marks. Now what happens? Student properties as well as marks properties. Both are inherited to result class. Now, student marks, student ID number, name, and marks both are copied to result class. Next, here result class is having its own data that is total. Next, float average. Okay, now public section. I want to print the result. Now, I want to show the student result. That's why here I am going to write show function. Okay, here first of all I want to find out total equal to m plus m1 plus m2 plus m3. Here it is the most important point. Actually, observe it total equal to m1 plus m2 plus m3. Actually, m1, m2, m3 are what members of marks class. Okay, here m1, m2, m3 are what data members of which class marks class and they are declared as private. Okay, Here there is no visibility mode that is why here they will become private and as per CPP private members are not available in outside. Okay, Here the important point is private members are not visible outside the class Okay, and they should be accessed with the member functions of same class only. But here I am going to use m1, m2, m3 in a derived class. Then how to make it? Then declare protected. That is it. It is why we need the protected. Okay. Now what happens? When the data members are protected, we can access that data members in that class and immediately derived class. Now result is derived from which one? Marks. That is why it is the immediately derived class. No? Now they are available here. That is why our system is not going to return any error. Okay. It is how to access protected members in inheritance. That is why we need the protected data members. Next, average. I want to find out average total by 3.0. Why? Because here we are going for three subject marks, three subjects and actually subject wise marks are what? Integers. Total also what? Integer. That is why here what happened? Integer by suppose it is 3. 3 also what integer, integer by integer always integer, but our requirement floating that is why 
3.0. Now, when it is 3.0, it is giving the accurate value. Next, total available, average available. I want to print this data. See out total equal to total end and see out average equal to average finish. Now, this function and class also completed. Now, in this example, ST one of the base class, okay? it is one of the base class and marks it is another base class and result is the derived. Now, it is derived from how many classes? Two classes. That is why what we have discussed multiple inheritance means deriving a class by using of more than one base class. Okay? That is why in multiple inheritance what happened? We are going to derive one class from more than one base class. Now, it is. Now, how to call this one? Okay? We need the main function to call this one. That is why here I am going for main function. Already we have discussed in inheritance what happens? Base class members are passed to derived class. That means, now the student details, marks details are available in result class. That is why directly we can create the object of result class. Now, main function, it is the main function. Now, I have to create the result class object, result R. Now, R is the what object. Next, first of all what we have to do? We have to enter the student ID name, then R dot get student function calling. When this function is called what happens? It is going to read the student ID name finish. Next, we have to read the student marks. That is why R dot get marks. Okay. Here, it is going to read the student 3 subject marks. Later, R dot put student. Okay. This function is going to st show the student ID and name. Next, uh, R dot put marks and this one is going to show what student 3 subject marks and at last uh, I want to show the result where it is in show function that is why r dot show. Now, it is going to find out the total average and it is going to display the total and average that means the student result is displayed. Now, at last get ch program finish. It is what is called multiple inheritance. Okay. That is why in multiple inheritance, multi level inheritance and generally in hybrid inheritance, we need the protected data members. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for watching.